There are a number of uh, different pieces of information that we can get from nuclear magnetic resonance tools, um, and it's one of the more complicated measurements that we make. But underneath it all, there are some uh, pretty simple and straightforward uh, principles that I'd like to try and uh, get across to you now. Um, at the heart of uh, hydrogen atoms, we have um, uh, protons in the hydrogen nucleus, and these behave like little bar magnets, so they're all in all the water and the oil and the fluids down hull. And uh, because they behave like uh, little bar magnets, they have an effectively a north and a south pole. If we uh, if we run our nuclear magnetic resonance tool in the hull and uh, activate a, a magnetic field, we can actually align all those protons in the fluids up uh, together. And once they're all aligned, uh, they start. Um, uh, providing us with a signal um, by aligning them together and then applying some what's called radio frequencies out from the tool we can uh, wobble them a little bit and we can uh, measure uh, the amount of signal we get back by moving these uh, protons around uh, together and uh, the way that they behave with each other um, can tell us a lot about the interaction that they're having i.e. in the fluids with the borehole wall sorry with the pore with the pore space walls and that can tell us a lot about the underlying geology let me it's probably simplest just if I show you we make a measurement here's a a raw NMR measurement now uh, not a lot of people potentially look at those types of uh, displays but what we're doing here um, is looking down on what's called the raw echo trains. So these uh, these NMR echo trains, this is what's called a VDL display if you like. It's a, um, it's a display. Look, if we took a measurement at every depth in the well bore and we, um, we actually look down on it uh, from above. So here we are um, looking down on these measurements. Now each one of these little um, speckly lines is a is a what's called an NMR echo train basically so here we have the raw echoes there's no processing done on that this is a, a raw measurement that the tools making basically we're aligning all the protons up together on the right hand so, sorry on the left hand side of this display and we get them if you like singing out um, a signal we align them all up and we get a nice big signal and as uh, we let that signal decay away through time, um, as the protons react with the pore space wall, they uh, they come out of alignment, and we lose this nice big coherent signal. So this NMR signal is proportional to porosity. So the higher the porosity, the larger the number of protons, because we've got more water or more oil in there and then we align those all up so we get a nice big big signal so we get a nice big red signal at uh, early time here so the higher the porosity in this case you'll see I've I've put in some nice big pore spaces down here in this lower sandstone interval and you can see that we've got much, a little bit better red signal um, than compared to this upper interval so that is that is if you like the big porosity that's everything all singing together giving us a nice signal now as we uh, play some games uh, with the tool, we let that signal decay away um, and it gets it gets less from, from left to right. And what I've done here is I've applied a heavy filter just to make it a little bit easier for you to see uh, what's going on. So this is an extremely heavy filter and it's just done for visual inspection purposes. If we look down again at the top of this heavily smoothed uh, curve now so instead of all these nice little speckly spikes we're seeing just a lot of these green heavily filtered decay times and so it, it makes it a little bit easier you can see here we've got the nice big porosity early time signal everything's all aligned up together singing out giving us a nice signal and then as we let that decay away um, from left to right uh, as we 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 color it in from from red to blue, uh, these protons are returning to their random ground state, and what you tend to find is that in large pores, you know where these protons are far away from the borehole wall, uh, they don't tend to interact with the borehole wall, 
so they tend to stay aligned a lot longer so they still can maintain their signal uh, out through time so it stays red or green longer in the small pores where there's not uh, potentially that much porosity in the first place but the, what porosity there is it rapidly decays away because obviously the protons are very close to the borehole wall and so therefore the moment that we uh, let the signal decay um, they return to their random non-aligned state very quickly and the signal decays and so we get a blue uh, much earlier on in the, in the signal so here you see these flames if you like of high porosity and gradually decaying away now the the better the bigger the porosity the longer it takes for these flames to, to die away but in the shales and the mud rocks we very rapidly uh, lose the signal as the protons return to their ground state so one of the things we can do is we can look at that decay through time and we can see how much signal are we losing in early time um, if we're losing a lot that means that there's a lot of the small pore spaces available and uh, so we invert the volume underneath these um, these curves if you like and we can calculate the porosity um, at each time through the decay so if we get a peak of porosity at early time that means that we're losing large amounts of porosity quite quickly so that's a quick decay so we've got clay bound water and if we've got porosity bins way out late in time then that means we've got nice big pores that aren't interacting with the borehole wall and we've got nice uh, big pore space so the volume of porosity associated with this pore size behavior uh, we can partition that into bins and so let's uh, let's run through that here so we're calculating the amount of porosity at each stage in the decay and the later the porosity the bigger the bins the bigger the, the bigger the porosity pore size is it's coming from so it's kind of like a a, uh, a pore size distribution now there are some complications with uh, fluid effects and uh, and such like but uh, I don't want to complicate things too much with that so generally you get a feeling for the amount of porosity and in what type of pore space it's in and all of these bins sum up if you like if you take the total amount of space underneath the curve that sums up to the total porosity seen by the tool and that's actually independent of uh, the matrix type because we're just we're just looking at the fluids here which is kind of nice so what we have here if you like is a T2 distribution so if I took one of these um, curves this is the remember the the integrated volume uh, of porosity uh, and I, I just take one of those as an example out here so the amount of porosity in this early time here is uh, the clay bound water so this is the water held it's very close to this pore surface reacts very quickly as soon as you take the magnets away the alignment goes and you lose that quite rapidly so that's that's the amount of porosity associated with the clay bound fluid then there's a portion of the distribution that's associated with the capillary bound uh, fluid so this isn't actually held chemically within the rock but it's held by um, uh, wettability forces uh, capillary forces this is the thin film of water that's held to the sand grains uh, by capillary forces then you get out here into what's called the producible fluid or the free fluid that's this stuff here right in the middle of the pore space takes a long time for that protons to to return to their ground state nice big signal big pore spaces you can get um, fluids in and out of these things quite nicely and uh, we get oil and water both of those can be free they both have similar hydrogen indexes but that's the signal out here so this is this is what we like to see nice big pore spaces plenty of space for um, for hydrocarbons and and uh, free fluids to, to hang around in and, and be produced through so that's uh, uh, a nice uh, understanding of the pore size so here 
when we take various ratios of this small pore size to big pore size, if you think back to that core plug, how easy will it be to blow from one side of the core plug to another? Well, if you've got a nice lot of big pores, obviously it's very easy. And if you've got a lot of small pores, it's very difficult. And uh, there are various relationships out there that we can take this NMR data and uh, we can plot up some ratios of the big pores to the small pores and we can get an estimate of the permeability. What's interesting on this particular trace is that uh, although the porosity, the NMR porosity, is quite similar, not, not too dissimilar, uh, we see that the permeability down here in this lower sand is much better than the permeability in this upper sand. Even though the porosity, the amount of oil it can hold, is the same, this stuff here will be much higher permeability. Um, and that's a function of these pore sizes, the pore size distribution. And that's a really key a nice thing to get out of the NMR measurement. It doesn't just tell you the, the volumetric quality of the rock, i.e. how much oil you can store in it, which it can do. It also tells you something about the pore the reservoir quality as well, so therefore it gives you a handle on this permeability. It isn't a direct measurement, but it can be calibrated uh, on a field-by-field -field basis to give you a very good estimate of permeability. So, in summary, there's a whole bunch of things that you can get out of NMR, porosity being one of them, these permeability estimates. Uh, you can also measure the amount of what's called irreducible water saturation residual oil saturation. These are a whole bunch of petrophysical uh, terms here that um, you may or may not uh, need to know about. But there's a whole bunch of information in this NMR um, tool. And uh, it's good for all of those things, particularly the last one, annoying accountants, because it tends to be, obviously, as you might expect, quite an expensive measurement. Although these days um, NMR is becoming more and more of a routine um, measurement to be made. There's clearly a lot of information in there and uh, it doesn't just have to be for exotic applications. It can tell you a lot about your reservoir and, and how it's going to flow and, um, and lots of other things that uh, you might miss out on uh, with conventional log analysis. So hopefully you uh, could follow all of that. There's a rewind button. You can try it again if you can uh, put yourself through it.